Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day in Colorado. I want to take a minute and I want to talk about this topic of squeezing more emotion and more getting more music out of this 10-hole diatonic harmonica. Before I do that, I do want to give a quick update. Um, I'm going to do this quickly, as quickly, as efficiently as I can and tell you what's coming up. Um, so if you want to catch me on the road, uh, this is the time of year to do it. Every year, right around this time, I'm pretty much on the move. So here's what's coming up. This Friday, I'm leaving. I'm heading to Chicago. Um, and I'm going to be doing a string of gigs with Jerry Hunt and Matt Hendricks. These are both great blues players, uh, musicians out in Chicago. They've been there for a long time, and they're two really good friends of mine. So I'll put I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll update the description of the video, and I'll put locations, times, uh, the name of the place I'm playing. But just to get you started, Friday night, I will be at the Smoke Daddy in Chicago, if you're in and around Chicago, in Wicker Park, there's two locations. It'll be the Wicker Park location, 9 p.m. with the Jerry Hunt Trio. So if you want to see me in a band context, come on out to, if you're in that area, come on out to that gig, as well as the next night at a place called Mom's Place, which is a cool blues hotspot right now in Chicago. It's, it's just a really awesome little room to both play and hang out and listen to blues. So more dates with duos throughout the week, and then on the 21st and 2nd, I'm headed to Fort Wayne, Indiana to go to Sweetwater. This is an amazing uh, facility. Look up Sweetwater in Fort Wayne, Indiana if you want to know more about Sweetwater. They're hosting the Gear Fest event, um, just the latest and greatest products that are coming out from all these different companies. It's a really fun event, um, so... Check it out if you can. It's going to be um, that Friday, Saturday, 21st and 22nd. Uh, I don't know the cost to get in, but uh, I'll be there at the Honer booth with Honer. So, hey, everybody. Saying hello. Good to see you guys. And then um, I'm going to just speed things up here so I can talk about the topic that I have today posted. Um, the following weekend, I'm headed to Dunville, Ontario in Canada to join the Shared Harvest Harp Workshop with Phil Wiggins and Carlos Del Junco. This is a killer retreat. I've done this. will be my third time doing it. So check that out. I'll put a link to all this in the video description if you're just joining. And then in July, I want to offer up a very short, kind of an abbreviated Global Blues Harmonica Summit. Those are the online webinars that I've been doing. Uh, you can go to harmonica123.com to learn more about it. But basically the format is online. So I'm hoping to offer up one on, I think, July 13th. That's what I'm thinking. So check, look out for that. I'll put more info on it. The price will be really sweet too. And then the following weekend, I go to Scotland. So for anybody in and around uh, that area, I'll be in Edinburgh and I'll be there from the 18th, 19th, 20th of July working with uh, Tomlin Lecky, Lee Sankey, and Liam Ward uh, and another harmonica event, a teaching event. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's There's one more I want to shout out to SPA. If you don't know what SPA is and you love harmonica, you're watching this channel. SPA is the Society for the Preservation and Advancement of Harmonica. And every year they do a killer convention. So uh, it's a, it's was a life-changing event for me to start attending these and that is happening in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'll be there teaching a little bit, playing a little bit. Nothing, uh, no big schedule, but uh, I will be there uh, 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th of August. All right? Hey, Jerry, that's the way to think, man. That's right. Hopefully this is a little bit better than the news. The news is depressing these days. Um, and lastly, in September, you guys, if you live in the New England area, I plan on returning to work with Annie Rains September 20th and 21st for yet again another harmonica event. So that's what's going on. I'll post all this stuff in the video description. Let's talk about um, squeezing more emotion and music out of your 10 hole. I want to communicate one idea in this clip today. Only one. And I think it's that important that it could be a single focused. I haven't done many clips lately about 
uh, teaching clips on the harmonica. So a long time ago, it occurred to me that the more refined my technique became uh, on this little ten hole, the more emotionally connected I was to it. And I also noticed that the more emotion I tried to put in, I tried to feel and emote when I played, the higher, my, the higher level technique I would reach slowly. But it was the emotional output that almost attracted the skills that I needed to get what I was trying to have come out of the instrument. So, and I ended up stumbling on a really cool article about this topic years ago, confirming what I had, you know, felt and thought all along. I forget who it is now, but it was really well, it was, it was well worded and this guy just really nailed it that he was working, it was about a music teacher working with a student and the student was struggling on a particular piece of music and you, he could see the intensity building emotionally on his face and then he, he had a breakthrough and, it, and his, it was all about talking about how with the more emotion you put in, you'll get that eventually the technique you need. Now, of course, we've got to study the technique, but the, the, the point is this. Those who have higher level technique can say a lot more in a smaller amount of space on a 10 hole diatonic, especially on any instrument for that matter. And the whole goal for me is to be able to express as much as I can in a small space so that I'm building a larger network of things and communication, th ideas that I can express. This is hard for me to communicate. Um, so instead of searching for ideas like a beginner or early intermediate, moving around playing riffs, just that kind of stuff, I'm sitting there going. I got a lot of ways that I can move around a smaller area and extract more ideas with more emotional value. And so what I would encourage you to do, I guess where I'm going with this clip is that I realize it's a pretty ambiguous or loose uh, topic, but it's really actually quite tangible if you experiment with this and you take a minute to see what you're really saying within just two holes. <laughs> that third hole and, and, and I've talked about limiting your space and practicing I approve this message right on harmonica man I approve your username uh, you, you know you slowly build your ability to communicate more on holes one two one two and three eventually one and four you're limiting you're not playing then you might do an exercise we've t I've talked about this where you only work on part of the high end in various positions and the whole goal is to extract more but Come at it from the emotional perspective, from a technique perspective that combines with emotion. So the higher level the technique, the more you can settle on, and the more your ear and your heart tunes into what that sound is really communicating in the moment. The combination of a hand wah, right? A specific technique with bending on the three and working a very specific range of bends, three draw half and full step. That combines to make a more emotional output, right? Than the guy that's just going or just going. So combining high level technique in smaller areas allows you to just stay somewhere. And then eventually, even when you're moving, you're feeling all the nuance of the areas you cross. Your ideas become a little more sophisticated, I guess. So I'm moving, but I'm, I'm paying attention to all the you know, detail of moving in and out of the bends and feeling those notes so that they mean something to me so that when I play them, it means something to you, the listener. There's that old, I guess, I don't know if it's an adage or a saying, but 
If you're not feeling it, you better believe no one else is. If you can't feel what you do, if it doesn't make you feel something, you must assume that those listening to you are probably not connecting. So make sure you're feeling something. And use the, the, the vehicle as the technique, okay? I guess that's, it, it took a minute for me to talk it out, I guess, to, from, for me to understand what I'm trying to say. By focusing on smaller, shorter increments, smaller range of the instrument, a focused area, and using just technique to dig in and see what you're missing, combining techniques, hand wah, bending, vibrato, but, but really trying to say something with just very little. If you start to do that, then when you're moving, you're really saying, you know, you're, you're always communicating. <laughs> That's what I got. That's all I wanted to say today. And I got a lesson coming up here at the top of the hour, but um, I really hope some of you can make it out to this event. Uh, I didn't talk about this because I quickly mentioned it in the schedule. Don't worry when people are, yeah, actually, I think I do. What made you ask that? How'd you know I had that? I don't know where that is right now. Where did I get that from? That must have been from Tom. I'll check it. Blue Moon. I specifically think I do have that harmonica. I think. I don't know where it is right now, so I can't can't really pull. I don't think I can pull that out for you. Yeah, not somewhere. I have a decent amount of harmonicas as you might imagine. Uh, so back to the idea of talking about this Global Blues Harmonica Summit, I failed to mention, actually. September 14th, the great Joe Felisco and Eric Noden will be joining the Global Blues Harmonica Summit. September 14th, it's in stone. Um, I'll share details on what they're teaching soon via harmonica123.com and also YouTube and all that. We'll put, I'll put some things out there. But I wanted to say that in July, I want to offer a mini summit, a short one. And I haven't narrowed down the idea. That's right around the corner. It's a month away. So uh, I want to bring in Bob Pellegrino. You've seen me post clips with this guitarist, this wonderful guitarist, Bob Pellegrino. If you've noticed my last few YouTube clips, I want to bring him over here and do some live, similar to what I did with Jerry Hunt, I put on a summit where we examined um, the various styles and grooves found in blues and we we demoed a whole bunch of, we took it from by example, song example. Well, I don't want to do that exact thing with Bob, but having a live musician here, we're certainly going to go through some really cool examples. I'll tell you what, when I have the description up, I'll put the YouTube video up and I'll just let you know what I'm doing with Bob. But that's around the corner. If you want to check out a Global Blues Harmonica Summit, an online webinar for blues harmonica that's really affordable, that would be the one. That would be the one. And that would be, again, July 13th. Um, haven't narrowed down the price point. In the past, they've always been around 50, 60 bucks. I did one with Jerry that was 40 bucks. That was the lowest one I ever did. And I think I'll make this one a really sweet deal. It's probably only going to be like a, a two to two and a half hour event. So the cost might be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 25 bucks, 30 bucks. I don't know yet. I need to sit down and see a couple different pieces of information on that. So look out for this stuff. I'm now using my new website, Harmonica123, to, to post all sorts of of um, news updates. And you can find that on the homepage.
for tuning in today. Really appreciate you guys staying with me. Um, if you ever have questions, go to harmonica123.com, shoot me a message, find me on Facebook. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to this channel and like this video. These are things I never say, but I see other YouTubers saying it. And I think it's probably wise that I start saying it. <laughs> so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can get, and not only subscribe, but if you have noticed the little bell in your subscriptions, click that bell and you'll actually get direct notifications. Um, when you're on YouTube, it'll let you know right away when I go live and I'll let you know when I post a new video. Really appreciate it. Uh, I don't see anything, any questions about the schedule or what's going on. Maybe somebody will come out to this thing in Chicago. I'll see somebody this weekend that's watching this. Um, but again, look at the video description. Uh, favorite key? I think to key harmonica, is that what it said? I think that's what you said. I can't get it to come back. Anyway, um, Favorite key, I'll give you both. My favorite key harmonicas are the low ones. Really like a G harp, B flat, A, A flat. But playing wise, it just depends. Am I singing or playing? It's fun to play in the key of F because a B flat harp, I agree, has a really sweet sound. Speed fluttering. Congratulations. There you go, Dwayne. Ah, uh, right on. Well, next time you come through Chicago, I might be there. I'm up there a lot, quite a bit, um, at least three, sometimes four times a year playing. So I'll tell you this, um, if you didn't, and I don't have too much time, but if you joined the Kim Wilson summit that took place um, last, not May or was it May? I think it was April. Yeah, it was in April. At any rate, if you joined that, um, Kim was talking about key harmonicas and how he decides, um, you're welcome, how he decides like what harp, to, <laughs> here's what he said, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. He was talking about like, he always likes to go to certain key harmonicas so he bases the choices on getting to those keys. So like songs in A, he's typically not always grabbing cross in D, he likes to get to that third position. And really, it was B. It was the key of B. He, he almost always is using that third, you'll notice, A harp. Or when he's in first, it's always a G harp. So if there's an opportunity he, that he thinks will work, it's always that. Uh, he had a specific way of, of getting around the way he thought about that. I thought it was fascinating. There were a couple moments in that summit that were very eye-opening. That's why I do these online events. Um, and sadly, currently, I cannot sell it. I might be able to do that soon down the line, but... Typically, I'm, I, I do sell record, access to the recordings, but I, I need to work that arrangement out with Kim before I offer that to the public. Um, so many insights. It was incredible. And he answered questions for hours. Like, he just went over above and beyond. It was, it was awesome. So, it's Joe Felisco coming up in September. If you have never joined, check that out. A double reed plate is thicker, a thicker reed plate, which gives you more volume, more resonation on the harmonica. Ugh, I don't have, where did I put that? It's, it's stored in a different area. Yeah, I don't have one to show you, but that's the idea behind a double reed plate. They just produce more volume. Um, Kim once, once told me he loved, he's owned a couple and he loved it. This was years ago, but, uh, yeah, they're really nice because you can play really softly but get this volume out of them. They tend to be a little bit, they can be brighter depending on the comb you're using. So that that's kind of the other thing to consider. I keep looking over here because I'm looking at the clock. Um, oh! One more piece of news I totally forgot to put out there. I have three brand new lessons coming up on the website. Lessons for me, when I say that, these are downloadable lessons, usually between 10 and 15 bucks. 
Um, they come with a PDF follow along and audio tracks of me going through all the exercises. The latest one was pattern recognition, which I think is possibly the best thing I've come up with from an educational standpoint to help students have breakthroughs and find new patterns. Check that out. You can always look on the site. But I have just, thanks. I have just finished completing three new lessons. I guess I'm not totally done completing. I'm almost there. Um, the first one that'll probably release if they don't release at the same time is called Advanced Bending. And that one's totally done. So Advanced Bending's got several tracks on getting you to work on and exercises for bending. Just that's what that is all about. Um, the other one is Third Position Phrasing. Uh, I don't have links yet, so they're not available. Um, I do have a low F. I don't have links yet for these lessons, but when they're ready, I can update this video, perhaps. Um, so third position phrasing, I already released the third position blues licks lesson, and that one's going to be all about the approach to your phrasing. I start by getting you into, you know, the basics for guys that are more beginners, like here are your notes for the chords, let's practice some basic outlines of a 12 bar, but then I get into the phrasing aspect. Don't neglect that. And shit, I keep missing. They come so fast. How do I get back to messages? If anybody knows how to, how I can get back to those, I need to practice this. Um, so that's what's going on with that. That's going to be a good one, I think. And then blending techniques is the last one. Blending techniques, single notes, and chords, which, which I've talked about before, but I'm going to get into specific examples of how you can practice this. And, and then give you, again, several musical ideas, riffs in second position that you can see my formula of how I would go about practicing and doing it. These are also, yeah, it's going to be great. Um, these are also um, ideas I'm bringing to the workshops I mentioned where I'm traveling around. I'm bringing in a lot of these topics, these new lessons. I always try to correlate each year. I try. I don't, I'm not always successful, but. I want to create new content. I want to um, release it on my website so people can download it and practice along. But they're also meant um, they're meant to bring into live settings where I can see how it's working with people in real time. So I, I always kind of try to pair that idea of work, release new stuff, but bring those ideas to my live workshops for the year. So if you're joining some, you can expect to see some of these topics. Yeah. And you're right, whoever said about the foundation, yeah, you got to get all your foundation straight. <laughs> holding bends. Yeah, so holding bends. Hey, David. This is a low F. Rocket low. That's a topic on the advanced bending is pegging bends. It's one of the exercises. How to strengthen that exact skill. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Um, but yeah, basically, you got to learn how to lock in the tongue position so that when the lips go off, you know where that is. You can create, or before the lips go back on, I could say. Either way, you can think about it. You got to be able to go on and off and go right to a bend. And it, it, the beginning stages are really getting tied into and, and, and understanding what your tongue's really doing from the perspective of its position and the pressure, the upward pressure and all this. So you got to really practice on and off going to it. That's the, the secret with that. Somebody said they're not using the one bend and the five bend. And I'll just say this. Why wouldn't you want that little micro bend in the five? You can find ways to bring that in and the the one bend, maybe not as much on a low F, but on a key like G. Yeah, you want that. You want that. Got to practice those notes. Um, all right, I think I think that's what I got for today. It's just water. I should 
probably mention. <laughs> Making the cheers makes it look like it could be something else, but it's not. It's too early here. I'm about to go teach, so I'm going to run. <clears throat> Thanks again for tuning in. Give me a little bit to update this post, but eventually I will put links, website, addresses, etc. Recommend to learn from. Ooh. To learn from? Who would I recommend to learn from besides me? Plenty of people. I mean, if from the, if you just jump on YouTube, obviously Adam Gusso and Jason Ritchie and, you know, these guys have teaching videos. Um, there's a lot of good teachers out there. It's like, um, I shouldn't say that. There are some good teachers out there. There are very few great teachers that really can play the hell out of it and also really slow down and, and explain what they're doing. At least that's been my experience. So I don't know, um, but I do like the way those two guys teach and there's plenty of others too. Uh, but perhaps you should also think about what kind of, here's the way I think about it. I, you know, oh cool, I didn't know you had an instructional DVD. Mark Hummel. Rick astrin has got one. It's not crazy instructional. Jerry Portnoy's got instructional stuff, but you can go all over and buy all this stuff. What I would say to you is find the player that you're most attracted to from, from their style of playing. That's number one. Then of all the guys you love the way they play, then figure out the guys that can actually teach. For me, when I was learning, I had to like really be connected. If I wasn't into what that person was, the way they played, yeah, Annie Raines, good teacher, good player. There's a good, there's a good combo right there. But if you're not into the way that they play and it doesn't inspire you, why do you want to learn from them? You know what I mean? You might learn some technique or ideas, but like the best way is to find out like what style do you love? Is it blues? If it's blues, then listen to all your blues guys and then who, who of those guys are teaching. So that's the way I see it. Hope you guys have a great day. Um, just making sure I didn't leave anything out. I will catch you soon in another post. Enjoy the rest of your day.